excellent Emily. It was autumn on the island of Sodor. There had been a terrible storm. Lots of tracks were blocked, and lots of engines had broken down. But Emily made it to Brendam Docks with her load. Well done. You're the only engine to arrive on time. You are excellent, Emily. That made Emily very proud. Excellent, Emily, she thought. I like that. The fat controller had a very important job for Emily. Jeremy cannot land at the airport, and my mother is on board. The storm has blown some metal tanks across the runway. You must collect Trevor from Farmer McCall's. Take him to the airport so that he can clear the runway. Then Jeremy can land. Oh, yes, sir. Excellent Emily can do it. Then Murdoch puffed alongside Emily. I'm going to Farmer McCall's too. Lots of lines are flooded. Take the Wellsworth track. I'm not going on that track. It's much quicker to go through the forest. I'm excellent, Emily. I can make it through. So Emily puffed through the forest. But soon she was up to her axles in water. Nothing will stop me. Excellent Emily will find a way through. So she puffed on through the water. It was hard work. At last, Emily chuffed out of the flood, but now she was late. Thomas was waiting at the junction. There's a fallen tree. It's blocking the tracks. Harvey's coming to clear it. I'm excellent, Emily. I don't need Harvey to clear the tracks for me. And she puffed proudly away. Emily chuffed up to the fallen tree. I'll easily push this out of my way, she huffed to herself. Emily pushed as hard as she could, but the tree didn't roll out of the way. It stayed in front of Emily. Now Emily had to push the tree up a hill. It was very hard work, and Emily was getting later and later. At last, Emily came to the top of the hill. The tree rolled away, and Emily raced down the other side. Emily met Duck at a junction. Trevor's waiting for you. Don't worry, I'll be there soon. Some of the tracks ahead are very muddy. If you get stuck in the mud, it's going to take you even longer. I'm excellent, Emily. And I know which tracks to choose. Duck was worried. Emily raced through the villages. She rattled through the valleys. I'm nearly there, Emily thought. Emily steamed round the final bend and straight into a big puddle of mud. I'll puff through this, thought Emily. Then the track started to sink. Emily was stuck. She didn't feel like excellent Emily anymore. Oh no, now I'll never get Trevor to the airport. Further up the track, Emily saw Murdoch. Murdoch's already there, she thought to herself. I should have listened to Murdoch. I should have taken the Wellsworth track. Now she needed Murdoch's help. Emily blew her whistle as loud as she could. Murdoch puffed over. I'm very sorry, Murdoch. You were right. Please. Will you pull me out of the mud? Of course, Emily. Soon Murdoch was chained up to Emily. With a huff and a chuff, he pulled her out of the mud. Thank you so much, Murdoch. Emily puffed up to Farmer McCall's. Trevor was waiting. 
I must take you to the airport right away, Trevor. Emily pumped her pistons. Then she stopped. I know what I have to do, Emily thought. Murdoch, which tracks would you take to the airport? The tracks on Gordon's Hill are still being cleared. You should take the valley route instead. Thank you, Murdoch. And she puffed away. Emily puffed happily along the valley track. Murdoch was right, she thought. Then Emily saw a telegraph pole across the track in front of her. She was going to push it out of the way. Then she remembered what Thomas had said. I'd better wait for Harvey, she huffed to herself. Soon Harvey cleared the track and Emily was on her way again. Emily pulled up at a junction. Ahead, she saw a shortcut to the airport. That track's muddy. Emily remembered what Duck had said about muddy tracks. I don't want to get stuck again, thought Emily. I'll take the longer track. Soon Emily arrived at the airport. Trevor cleared the runway just in time. Jeremy landed smoothly and safely. The Fat Controller was delighted to see his mother. Well done, excellent Emily. You made it in time. Ah, oh, that's because everyone helped me, sir. All of your engines are excellent engines. Duncan and the Hot Air Balloon. It was a beautiful day in the hills of Sodor. It was also the Thin Controller's twin's birthday. Every year, Duncan gave the twins a special birthday ride. Duncan was excited. At the depot, Duncan was getting ready. He had to look his best. His special birthday flag had been fixed to his cab. Duncan was very proud of his flag. Mr. Percival came to see Duncan. Shall I pick up the twins now? No, Duncan. This year I'm giving them a ride in a hot air balloon for their birthday. Duncan was disappointed. He wanted to give the twins their birthday treat. Duncan, you must collect a hot air balloon from the transfer yards. Yes, sir. And he chuffed sadly away. Duncan pulled into the transfer yards. Thomas had brought the balloon from the docks. The balloon man was filling it with hot air. Hello, Duncan. Hello, Thomas. That's a wonderful balloon. You be sure to puff slowly and carefully. So Duncan huffed slowly away to Mr. Percival's house. On his way, Duncan rolled over a bumpy track. His flatbed clank rattled and jiggled. One of the ropes holding down the balloon came undone. Oh dear, thought Duncan. The bumpy track has jiggled the balloon loose. What shall I do? Then an idea flew into Duncan's funnel. If I jiggle the balloon more, it might float away. Then I could give the twins a ride today and they could have a balloon ride tomorrow. So Duncan began to jiggle backwards and forwards over the bumpy track. The ropes loosened and the balloon floated away. Hooray! and Duncan chuffed cheerily to the Thin Controller's house. Duncan puffed round a bend. Then he stopped. The hot air balloon had floated down. It was right in front of him on the track. Duncan bumped into the balloon. Flatten my funnel. Now what should I do? 
The basket wobbled and one of the sandbags fell off. It made the balloon rise up a little. Duncan was puzzled. He biffed the balloon again. More sandbags fell off. The balloon rose higher and higher and floated away. Duncan was delighted. Duncan chuffed round another bend. Bus my buffer. There, on the bridge above him, was the balloon. I thought the balloon had floated away. What shall I do now? He thought. Duncan chuffed his biggest puff. The hot smoke from his funnel flew into the balloon. It made the balloon get bigger. This gave Duncan an idea. He huffed and puffed and puffed and huffed. The balloon got bigger and bigger and floated away. Duncan was delighted. He raced to the thin controller's house. The thin controller was waiting for him. Where's the hot air balloon, Duncan? It came loose, sir, and floated away. The thin controller was upset. Then there was trouble. The balloon floated down from the sky once again, straight towards the weather vane on the thin controller's roof. It burst on the sharp point. The balloon tumbled down. Fizzling fireboxes. Duncan was upset. Now the twins wouldn't have their balloon ride at all. It's all my fault, sir. I just wanted to give the twins their birthday treat, just as I always have. The thin controller was cross. Duncan, you were going to give the twins their birthday ride. You were going to pick them up and bring them here. Duncan felt even more upset. He wanted the twins to have a happy day. Sir, Peter Sam could pick up the twins. Then I will go and collect the balloon repairman. I'm sure he could fix the balloon. The thin controller thought this was a very good idea. So Duncan puffed quickly away. Duncan raced into Mountain Village Station. The balloon repairman was waiting. We must be quick, sir. The balloon has to be fixed before the twins get home. Duncan chuffed quickly back to the Thin Controller's house. The Thin Controller was very pleased to see them. The balloon repairman looked at the hole in the balloon. Oh dear, it's a very big hole. I don't have enough material to fix it. I know, sir. My birthday flag, it might just be big enough. The balloon repairman looked at Duncan's flag. Well, yes, Duncan. That would be perfect. The balloon repairman fixed the balloon just in time. Peter Sam arrived with the twins. They were delighted. Soon, Mr Percival and the twins were floating high above the island of Sodor. And Duncan felt so happy he thought his boiler would burst. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Steady Eddie. 
Edward is one of the oldest engines on the island of Sodor. Edward may not always be the fastest engine, but he certainly is the steadiest. And for the fat controller, a steady engine is a really useful engine. One morning, Edward puffed into the docks. Good morning. Then the fat controller arrived. The brand new brass water wheel has just arrived from the mainland. It is magnificent. It'll be displayed by the waterworks at Great Waterton. Emily, Gordon and Edward were very excited. They couldn't wait to see the magnificent water wheel. Edward, you will deliver the water wheel to Great Waterton. Edward beamed from buffer to boiler. Gordon and Emily were surprised. I've chosen you, Edward, because you are the steadiest engine. You are to take the express line. It is the smoothest and most direct way to Great Waterton. Gordon gasped. Edward was to use his express line. Frankie lowered the water wheel onto Edward's flatbed. It had a shiny brass rim that shone in the sun. Everyone looked at the magnificent water wheel. Edward the Steady is at the ready. And very slowly, Edward pushed his special special out of the docks. Edward puffed up to the junction for the express line. Thomas was waiting. Bust my buffers, Edward. That's a very special special. Edward was very happy. He looked ahead. If he took the express line, he couldn't stop for people to admire his magnificent water wheel. But if he took the other track, he could stop at stations and bridges and sidings. A lot of people would see his special special. The signal changed. Edward didn't take the express line. Edward was having a wonderful time. He went past station, under bridges, and past farms. Everyone cheered and waved. Edward the Steady was now Edward the Magnificent. Edward arrived at the junction. The track ahead is in need of repair. But the track ahead led to the school. Edward wanted the school children to see him. So he chuffed on towards the broken track. The track was very bumpy and jumpy. The shiny brass edge of the wheel started to cut into the ropes. But Edward didn't know. At the school, children cheered and waved. Edward wasn't looking at the red signal. Flatten my fender! Edward applied his brakes, but too late. The shiny brass edge of the water wheel cut even deeper through the ropes. Edward knew now that his long journey had made him late. Then he had an idea. I will chuff up Gordon's Hill, Edward thought. It's the fastest way to Great Waterton. And, he huffed to himself, the other engines on the hill will all see my special. Edward chuffed and huffed up Gordon's Hill. Oliver and Arthur passed him coming down. They both thought his special was magnificent. But the water wheel was very heavy. Edward huffed and puffed up the hill. At last, he reached the top. But the edges of the water wheel were cutting deeper and deeper into the ropes. Then there was trouble. With a final jolt, the ropes broke. The magnificent water wheel rolled off Edward's flatbed. For fizzling fireboxes. Gordon was further down the hill with flatbeds of scrap iron. The water wheel rolled down the hill 
it bounced onto Gordon's flatbed. Now Edward's magnificent water wheel was on its way to the smelters. Edward had to get to the smelter's yard before Gordon. Edward puffed and Edward panted along every shortcut he knew. No one saw Edward pass and no one stopped to wave. That no longer mattered to Edward. He had to save his magnificent water wheel from the smelters. Gordon puffed slowly into the smelter's yard. He pulled up outside the smelting shed. Then suddenly, there was Edward. Gordon was surprised. Edward the Steady had won his race against the fastest engine on Sodor. The magnificent water wheel was once again tied down to Edward's flatbed. Edward the Steady once more at the ready. And his wheels clickety-clacked without a crunch or a crack or a cheer or a clap along the way. The water wheel was put into place. It looks grand. It looks magnificent. And Edward didn't need anyone else to tell him that his had been a very special special. Captain Marvel. The narrow-gauge engines in the hills of Sodor always want to hear stories. Their favourite ones are about a magical engine called Proteus. Peter Sam enjoys these stories most of all. One morning, Peter Sam puffed into the transfer yards. He was very excited. Thomas is collecting the famous storyteller Mary Marvel. She is going to read at a special show. All the little engines whistled and wished. I hope she tells stories about Proteus. Then the thin controller arrived. He gave them all special jobs. There is a lot to do. Please be back in good time for Miss Marvel. The little engines peeped their whistles excitedly. Peter Sam collected the cream churns quickly. I hope I'm the first to see Miss Marvel, he huffed to himself. So Peter Sam raced away. The churns clinked and clanked and his wheels clickety-clacked. Freddy was waiting at a junction. He had a lot to do. You're in a hurry. Yes, I want to be the first engine to see Miss Marvel. I'm going to take a shortcut to the showground. And Peter Sam raced away down an old twisty track. Peter Sam huffed and puffed to the top of the old twisty track. Whee! He whistled as he rolled down the other side. Then he saw a thick hedge across the track. Oh no! Peter Sam crashed through the hedge. With a clang and a prang, he hit something hard. Fizzling fireboxes. There, in front of Peter Sam, was a statue of Proteus. It was sitting on a rusty old flatbed. Some farm workers appeared to see what the noise was. Oh my, look! It's a statue of Proteus. It looks very old. Peter Sam thought his boiler would burst. Then an idea flew into his funnel. No one must see the statue before the show. It will be my wonderful surprise and I will be the star of the show, he thought. Peter Sam tooted to the workers. Please, can you cover the statue? I'll be back to collect it soon. Peter Sam chuffed quickly back to the top of the old track. He stopped at the junction. 
Duncan chuffed up. He still had to collect benches for the show. Duncan, when you come back, don't take the shortcut. There's something blocking the track. Thank you very much. And Duncan chuffed off. Next, Mighty Mac pulled up. He still had to pick up flowers for the show. When you come back, please don't take the shortcut. There's something blocking the track. Thank you. And Mighty Mac chuffed off. Then, Freddy puffed up. He still had to pick up lanterns for the show. Freddy, when you come back, please don't take the shortcut. There's something blocking the track. Ah, thank you. And he chuffed off. Peter Sam was pleased. Now the statue of Proteus was sure to be a surprise. The farm workers had covered the statue of Proteus. Peter Sam was coupled up to the flatbed. Peter Sam pumped his pistons. The cream churns were heavy, but Proteus' statue was even heavier. Peter Sam huffed and puffed to the top of the hill. Now I can roll down the other side, he thought. Peter Sam raced down the hill. There was a junction ahead. Oh no, this load is too heavy. Help! Peter Sam smashed into a buffer. The cream churns crashed. The junction was blocked. Bubbling boilers. I'll never be the star of the show now. The other engines can't get through. I've spoiled everything for everyone. Then Peter Sam heard the whistles of his friends. Duncan, Freddy and Mighty Mac arrived at the junction. They were surprised at the mess. Peter Sam felt very silly. I'm sorry. I wanted to be the star of Miss Marvel's show. He told them about finding the statue of Proteus. The engines gasped. The statue belongs to us all. Please, will you help me take it to the show? His friends were happy to help. Duncan chuffed away to find an engineer for Peter Sam. Mighty Mac puffed to tell Mr. Percival about the statue. Freddy, will you take Proteus to the show? Freddy was delighted. It would be an honour. Soon the engineer fixed Peter Sam's brakes. Now you're ready to go, Peter Sam. Later, Peter Sam collected fresh cream from the farm. I know Miss Marvel's show has started, but all the other engines will be there to enjoy the statue. Peter Sam chuffed his long way back. Peter Sam puffed up quietly. Miss Marvel was just finishing her last story. Oh my! The statue is still covered. Today, one of our engines found something very special. So this is for all the little engines of the hills, because you are all special. Everyone gasped at the wonderful statue. The engines whistled. Peter Sam smiled. We are all stars of the show. Henry gets it wrong. The Sodor wishing tree is a very old tree. It's older than Edward, older than Sir Handel. It's even older than the Fat Controller. Some say it's the oldest thing on the island. All the engines and children love to make wishes whenever they see the tree. Especially Henry. He thinks the wishing tree is magical. He whistles whenever he passes. One day, the Fat Controller arrived with some very bad news. A summer storm struck Sodor last night. The wishing tree was hit by lightning. All the engines were upset. Henry was the most upset of all. Some special woodsmen are arriving at Brendam Docks. Henry, you must take them to the wishing tree right away. Henry knew this was an important job. 
They have to be back at Brendam Docks by tea time. That's when their boat leaves. Yes, sir. And Henry puffed away as fast as he could. He chuffed towards Brendam Docks. At a junction, Henry decided to take the track that passed the wishing tree. Henry arrived at the wishing tree. It wasn't standing tall anymore. Some leaves were gone and some branches were broken. Sometimes, Henry, special woodsmen have to cut trees down. Oh, no. Now Henry was even more upset. Henry took the track to Brendan. His boiler bubbled and his steam sighed. But then he had to stop. Toby was blocking the line. He had snapped a piston rod. Oh dear, I can't get to Brendam if the track is blocked. Then Henry had an idea. If all the tracks were blocked, no one would be able to get to the tree, he thought. Then no one would be able to cut the tree down. I'll take your trucks for you, Toby. He buffered up to Toby's trucks. Toby's driver coupled Henry to the trucks. Henry pumped his piston and chuffed back down the track to the wishing tree. Then Henry saw Thomas at a signal. He had a long line of empty trucks to take to the quarry. I'll take your trucks for you, Thomas. Thomas happily agreed. So Henry reversed onto Thomas's track and he slowly wished away. Then Henry saw Percy at a water tower. Percy had to take truckloads of empty milk churns to the farm. Percy, I'll take your trucks for you. Thank you, Henry. Percy shunted his trucks onto the main line. Henry buffered up to Percy's trucks and whooshed away. Then Henry saw Emily. She had empty trucks to take to the coaling plant. I'll take your trucks for you, Emily. Thank you, Henry. So Emily shunted her train onto the main line. And Henry coupled up. He chuffed happily away. Henry had the longest line of trucks a big engine could pull. At last, Henry puffed to the wishing tree junction. He left Emily and Percy's trucks on one track. Then he shunted Thomas's trucks onto another. Finally, he shunted Toby's trucks onto the express line. All the lines to the wishing tree were blocked. Now nobody can get through. The wishing tree will be safe. At Brendam Docks, the special woodsmen were waiting. Henry hadn't arrived, so the docks manager asked Salty to take the woodsman. Aye, yes, sir. Salty tried to get to the wishing tree, but all the tracks were blocked with trucks. Henry was still feeling very happy. Then he heard Harold hovering over him. Henry, old chap, the special woodsman can't get through to the wishing tree. They're the only ones that can help. Without them, the tree will have to be cut down. Oh dear, the woodsmen are here to save the wishing tree, not cut it down. I have made a very big mistake. Henry felt terrible. Now I must put everything right as fast as I can. And he chuffed quickly away. First, Henry took Toby's trucks to the depot. Then he took Thomas's trucks to the quarry. Next, he took Emily's trucks to the coaling plant. Finally, he took Percy's trucks of empty milk churns to the farm. 
At last, all the tracks were clear. Henry collected the special woodsman. Thank you, Salty. Then he wished quickly away. Soon, Henry chuffed up to the wishing tree. The woodsmen were ready to start their very special work. They cleared and propped. They clipped and chopped. And Henry helped too. Soon the wishing tree was standing tall again. The wishing tree was saved. I wish the wishing tree would last forever and ever. The special woodsman cheered, and Henry smiled his biggest smile ever. Percy and the Bandstand. It was summertime on the island of Sodor. The Fat Controller was in Great Waterton with Miss Jenny, Jack and Alfie. They were building a new bandstand. There was to be an open-air concert that evening. It was a special surprise for Lady Hat. She loved brass band. All the engines were busy helping to make the day special. Edward was bringing special parcels. Thomas was bringing the banners and bunting. And Percy was bringing gravel for the pathways. Thank you, Percy. Right on time. Percy tried to shunt the trucks into place, but the trucks decided to be troublesome. <laughs> Hold back! Hold back! Percy pushed and pushed, but the trucks wouldn't move. <laughs> Percy knew what he had to do. He had to use his do-as-I-say whistle. So Percy blew his whistle long and loudly. The trucks knew that when Percy blew his do-as-I-say whistle, they had to do what he wanted. It meant Percy was in charge. Soon, all the trucks were in line. The fat controller bustled over to Percy. I hope I didn't blow my whistle too loudly. Not at all, Percy. You showed you were in charge. Percy was relieved. Now, I need you to collect Lady Hat and bring her to the surprise concert. You must be here by tea time, understand? Yes, sir. You mustn't tell her where she's going, or it will spoil the surprise. Don't worry, sir, I won't. Percy had collected the carriage. He had to meet Lady Hat at Maithwaite Station. It was a long way from Great Waterton. At last, Percy puffed into Maithwaite Station. All aboard! Sir Topham Hatt has sent me to take you on a special trip. Oh, that sounds lovely. First of all, I'd like to go to the duck pond. And Lady Hat climbed on board. Percy was worried. He was supposed to take Lady Hat to the bandstand. That was her special trip. Percy knew there wasn't time to go to the duck pond, but he didn't dare tell Lady Hat. He thought she might be cross, so he puffed to the duck pond. Lady Hat stood by the duck pond. She liked watching the ducks. They quacked and quacked. But Percy wanted them to be on their way. At last, Lady Hat was back on board. Next, I'd like to go to the windmill. Percy was very worried. He knew there wasn't time to go to the windmill, but he didn't feel brave enough to tell Lady Hat. So Percy puffed away. When they arrived at the windmill, Dusty Miller was there. Lady Hat was pleased. 
Hello, Dusty. How are you? We're going to be really late now, Percy huffed to himself. At last, Lady Hat finished talking to Dusty. Now, Percy, I'd like to see the bluebells in the woods. It would be the perfect end to my special trip. Percy was more worried than ever. Percy puffed to the woods, but with every puff he was getting later and later, and further and further from Lady Hat's surprise. Percy and Lady Hat arrived at the wood. Lady Hat wandered off to admire the bluebells. Percy waited and waited. Suddenly, Thomas puffed up to Percy. Where have you been, Percy? The Fat Controller is cross. He doesn't want Lady Hat to be late. Percy didn't want the Fat Controller to be cross. He didn't want the surprise to be spoiled. Don't worry, I'll have her there on time. So Thomas puffed away. Percy couldn't see Lady Hat anywhere. Percy knew what he had to do. He had to use his do-as-I-say whistle. Percy blew his whistle long and loudly. Lady Hat came out of the woods. Percy, what do you want? I'm taking you to a surprise. That's your special trip. Oh, I love surprises. Why didn't you tell me? Because I thought you'd be cross with me if I told you what to do. And now we might be late. We must hurry. So Lady Hat climbed quickly on board and Percy raced away. Percy steamed back to Great Waterton as fast as he could. The band was warming up. Jack and Alfie were very excited. Percy had arrived with Lady Hat on time. The band started to play. Lady Hat was delighted. Oh, what a lovely surprise. Thank you for bringing me here on time, Percy. And thank you, Percy, for keeping it a surprise. Percy was pleased. His do-as-I-say whistle had saved the day. It had been really useful, and so... Toby's special surprise. Toby is a very cheerful steam tram. He isn't as big or as strong as some of the steam engines, but he's always happy to help and willing to work. One spring morning, Toby chuffed cheerfully into Titmouth Sheds. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The fat controller had arrived. Henry, you are to take the mayor to the Scottish castle. Emily, you are to take a party of school children to Black Lock. And Thomas, you must take me to Great Waterton. Toby waited. He hoped he would be given a special job too. And you, Toby, are to go to your shed and wait. Toby was disappointed. His boiler barely bubbled. This afternoon, you must pick up workmen and take them to Great Waterton. Yes, sir. Toby watched his friends steam off to their special jobs. Waiting at his shed wasn't a special job at all. He puffed sadly away. Toby wondered why the other engines had been given specials and he hadn't. I know why, he thought. All the other engines have found something special. Emily found the seals at Black Lock. Henry found the flagpole for the Scottish castle. And Thomas found Great Waterton. If I find something, the Fat Controller will give me a special as well. I've plenty of time before I pick up the workmen. Toby puffed off to find something special. Toby steamed into the hills. Toby looked and looked but he could see nothing special at all. 
Suddenly, Toby stopped. He could see a big red bird in a very tall tree. I found something special, he huffed to himself. Toby huffed closer. Now he could see it wasn't a big red bird. It was an old Wellington boot. Oh dear, thought Toby. That's not special. And he puffed on. Toby steamed deeper into the hills and away from Great Waterton. Suddenly, he stopped. Toby could see something glistening and glittering in the afternoon sun. It's a treasure chest, thought Toby excitedly. I found something very special. Toby puffed closer. Now he could see it wasn't a treasure chest at all. It was a rusty truck of old tin cans. Oh dear, that's not special. Then he heard a whistle. It was Whiff. He had come to take the truck to the rubbish yards. Hello, Toby. Why are you looking at old tin cans? Toby felt very silly. He chuffed quickly away. Toby puffed sadly to a junction. Thomas was on his way back to Tidmouth. Hello, Toby. The fat controller's waiting for you at Great Waterton. Bus my buffers. He had spent too much time looking for something special. Now he was late. So Toby steamed quickly away. Toby huffed to the halt. The workmen boarded Henrietta. And they puffed quickly away. Toby knew he had to hurry to get to Great Waterton. Then Toby saw something bright shining beside the track. Maybe this is special. Now the Fat Controller won't be cross with me, Toby thought. But it wasn't something special. It was an old piece of metal stuck in the bushes. Then there was trouble. Toby had puffed so far looking for something special, he had run out of coal. Toby felt terrible. He hadn't found anything special, he hadn't delivered the workmen, and he hadn't been a really useful steam tram. Toby had to do something quickly. It was getting late. Toby asked the workmen to hit the piece of metal as hard as they could with their tools. And I will ring my bell as loudly as I can. Someone at Great Waterton is sure to hear us and come to our rescue. The Fat Controller was waiting at Great Waterton Station. He had heard the banging and Toby's bell ringing. Come along, Whiff. It sounds as though Toby's in trouble. The Fat Controller arrived on Whiff. Toby, what are you doing here? Toby felt very silly. I'm sorry, sir. I ran out of coal because I wanted to find something special. I thought then you would think that I am as special as the other engines. But, Toby, you are special. But only when I'm really useful. I know that now. You'll always be special. You are the oldest steam tram on Soldor. Toby felt very happy. Now, let's fetch Rocky and get that old metal to the smelters. Rocky quickly lifted the metal out of the bushes. Toby gasped, and so did the fat controller. On the other side of the metal was a picture of a steam tram. It looked just like Toby. Toby, you have found a sign for the Great Waterton Tram Shed. Toby's pistons popped with pride. Now that's special. And Toby couldn't have felt happier to be a steam tram. Heave ho, Thomas. 
Thomas is a busy and cheery engine as he puffs and huffs across the island. He always toots hello to other engines and to children along the way, even when Thomas is pulling heavy loads. One morning, Thomas puffed into Brendan Docks. The fat controller was waiting. You are all here to welcome the new engine. His name is Hank. I've heard he's very special. I've heard he's very strong. Hank puffed into the docks. Hank was very special. He had red wheels and a bright red cowcatcher, and he was very tall. The engines had never seen an engine like Hank before. Hank looks as strong as a giant. I'm sure he isn't stronger than a Sodor engine. Now, Thomas, I have three jobs for you. First, you must take new machines from the docks to the factory. Then you are to pick up stone from the quarry and deliver it to the shunting yard. And lastly, you must pick up an old tractor from Farmer McCall's and take it to the repair yard. Yes, sir. And you must take Hank with you. Hank must see the important sights of Sodor. Be back by tea time for Hank's welcome party at Knapford. Thomas buffered up to the machine trucks. Hank chuffed alongside. Hello. Howdy, Thomas. Now you look like one of the finest little engines I've ever seen. Thomas didn't like being called little. I'm a tank engine. Thomas thought Hank was being cheeky. Those trucks are way too heavy for you. Let me take them for you. Hank meant to be helpful, but it made Thomas cross. No, thank you. I'm strong enough to pull much heavier loads than this. I'd be happy to help. But Thomas was already puffing out of the docks. At the signal, Thomas didn't take the track to the factory. He chuffed straight to the quarry. Thomas pulled ahead. I may not be grand, and I may not be long, but I will show Hank that I'm stronger than strong, he huffed to himself. Thomas and Hank puffed into the quarry. Now I'm going to pick up the stone trucks. Hank was surprised. Hold your half in there, Thomas. Let big ol' Hank take those trucks for you. No, thank you. Tank engines can pull very heavy loads. So Thomas heaved and huffed out of the quarry. Thomas wheezed and wished. Handsome Hank gleamed and glowed by his side. Children waved from bridges. Hello, Thomas. Howdy, good to see you. Hey, Thomas, aren't you going to whistle hello? Thomas hadn't the puff to whistle hello. Hank had plenty of puff. This made Thomas feel even crosser. Thomas pulled up to the halt. He was nearly out of puff. Hello, Farmer McCall. This is Hank. He's the new engine on Sodor. Howdy, Farmer McCall. That's a mighty fine tractor you have. Say, Thomas, you look all out of puff and pull. I'll take it for you. No, thank you. And the tractor was coupled up to the end of Thomas's trucks. Thomas huffed and he puffed. His wheels spun and spun. Come on, Thomas. The train is too heavy for you. Take the pressure off your pistons. Couple me up. But Thomas was determined to pull the train on his own. We must not be late for your party. Wheel turn by wheel turn. Thomas puffed away. Thomas and Hank arrived at Marin Station. Visitors waved at Thomas. Thomas wanted to whistle back, but he hadn't any spare steam. Howdy, everybody. Thomas is overloaded right now. I'll whistle for him. Hank had lots of steam, and Hank blew the longest and loudest whistle. 
then there was trouble. Thomas had cracked a cylinder. The train was much too heavy. Oh no, now the deliveries won't be made. You won't be back in time for your welcome party. And I'm not a really useful engine, or even a really strong one. Shucks, Thomas, I'm so sorry. That's too bad. I wanted to show you I wasn't just a fine little steam engine. I wanted to show you I was really strong. So, I didn't want to ask for your help, but I do now. Please, Hank. I'd be happy to help. You give the orders, I'll do the pushing. Hank and Thomas dropped off Farmer McCall's tractor. The workmen were very sorry to see Thomas had broken down. Next, Hank and Thomas chuffed into the shunting yards. The yard manager was waiting. The stone trucks were uncoupled. I hope you're back on track soon, Thomas. Finally, Thomas and Hank delivered the new machines to the factory. Thank you, Thomas. Hank pushed Thomas back to Napford Station. They arrived just in time for the party. Thank you, Hank. Now all of Sodor knows what a strong engine you are. Hank smiled. And I know something too. You're the engine everyone cheers for on Sodor. That's something to be proud of. Thomas smiled. Hank was very special. He was a very special new friend.